let us move forward and let us go to the next mc all except are true for the wounds class 2 wounds class 2 wounds are always surgically created subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder let us move forward and let us go to the next mc all except are true for the wounds class 2 wounds class 2 wounds are always surgically created class 3 wounds are spontaneous viscous perforation let us quickly discuss let us quickly discuss this question when we talk about the wounds when we talk about the wounds one very important thing is class 1 they are clean wounds they are clean wounds and what do you mean by clean there is no entry there is no entry into git gut and respiratory tract there is no entry into git gut and respiratory tract point number 1 then we have class 2 class 2 when we talk about class 2 this is clean contaminated clean contaminated what do you mean by these wounds there is entry into git gut respiratory tract without any spillage without spillage if you talk about class 3 wounds what are class 3 wounds students they are contaminated wounds what is the difference between this and class 2 there is entry into git into git gut respiratory tract with gross spillage so there is gross spillage in this not only this if you see class 1 and class 2 wounds are exclusively associated with surgery whereas these wounds can be associated outside surgery also so fresh accidental wounds fresh accidental wounds they are class three wounds also also if there is gross breach of asepsis what do you mean by gross breach of asepsis when you are doing a procedure in a place which is not sterile like outside the operation theater if you have done a procedure that is gross breach of asepsis like er room cardiac massage emergency room open cardiac massage open cardiac massage for a patient brought with ventricular asystole this is what is a class 3 what is a class 4 wounds class 4 wounds they are dirty wounds all the spontaneous viscous perforation spontaneous viscous perforations come under this the second thing is so one is spontaneous viscous perforation second is old neglected contaminated wounds so old neglected old neglected wounds they are class 4 wounds so let us talk about this class 2 wounds are always surgically created absolutely true class 3 wounds are associated with spontaneous viscous perforation absolutely wrong because this is class 4 class 1 wounds are associated with no contamination so the answer for this question is b b is the correct response for this let us go to the next question again it's a question very interesting best way to relieve on relieve an obstructed foley so i have put a question on foley so that you can understand a lot of important things on this when we talk about follies how a follies get obstructed how follies get obstructed the answer is this is the bladder this is the bladder this is the tube and here this is the bulb so many a times there are adhesions of the bulb with the bladder wall and the second is many a times the crystals precipitate many you may use you may have used normal saline and the crystals precipitate and this may block so the one very important thing is obstructed follies how to remove it the first thing that you have to understand is that this bulb has a capacity so if you over inflate this bulb so over inflation over inflation with 10 to or you can say with 25 to 30 cc saline or water this is going to cause rupture students this is the first line this is the first line method remember if it fails 
if it fails then the best technique is usg guided usg guided supra pubic supra pubic puncture so usg guided supra pubic puncture of bulb and this is very 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 important very important so with a spinal needle with a spinal needle you are going to puncture it and this is actually considered the best in the era when this usg was not available people used to push ether and they used to go for chemical dissolution important thing that you all have to understand that today chemical dissolution is absolutely contraindicated chemical dissolution chemical dissolution is absolutely contraindicated when we talk about chemical dissolution why because there is increased risk of chemical cystitis so increased risk of chemical induced cystitis and that is why it is absolutely contraindicated so if you go to this question the best way answer is usg guided puncture if i change the question and say which is not so answer will be the chemical dissolution and cystoscopic removal is not possible for a police how the police is there how can you insert a cystoscope this is very strange Thank you.